Hey everyone, it's Tom here from the WB Trading Team. And today is, it's kind of a first in a series of videos on aspects of trading I want to cover that maybe aren't explained as well as they could be for beginner traders. We're going to look at a few concepts and terms that you've probably heard if you've had a look at trading in the past. And you might think, okay, everybody's mentioned this, how useful is it and how can I understand how to use it? So the first one we're going to cover today is market liquidity. You, chances are you've come across this term before, but what does it actually mean? And in a realistic sense, how can it help our trading? So we'll cover all that, we'll go through some examples, and by the end of the video, you'll have a better understanding of how market liquidity is used, what it actually involves, and how it can benefit you. So let's get started. Just very quickly before we dive in, if you're still struggling with your trading, or you'd like to know more about how mechanical edges are traded, I've put together a free video course for you that'll map out and explain everything in detail, along with walking you through exactly how the mechanical rules actually work. If you'd like to watch that after this video, I'll pop a link in the description. You can click through and you can watch that straight away. So let's begin by basically covering what do we mean by liquidity in trading? So kind of one of the official definitions um, that I got off Investopedia, just to read through, is the efficiency or ease with which an asset or security can be converted into ready cash without affecting its market price. Now, if you're like me, the first thing you're thinking, if you've read that for the first time, is doesn't mean anything to me. What on earth are they going on about? And yeah, that is a little overcomplicated. I know it's an official definition. They've got to make it detailed. But when we're talking about liquidity, what we're really talking about is how easy is it to make a transaction? And that comes down to a few things. It comes down to basically ease of access to the market. So how, how available is the market? How many buyers and sellers are on that market? Obviously, for every buyer, you need a seller to perform the transaction. How quickly can the transaction be performed? Can it be executed? Which, in a way, comes down to your broker as well. And how competitive are the spreads? So the tighter the spread, the better, the more liquid the market. So it comes down to those three factors when we're looking at it from a purely trading perspective. So to cover those again, how easy is it to make a trade? How quickly can you make a trade? And how much spread do you have to pay on that particular market to make that trade? So what examples do we have of liquid markets? Well, kind of by a long stretch, the Forex markets are the most liquid. You know, they have the highest liquidity, they have the highest trading volume, massively dwarf, any of the other markets, all of them put together, to be honest. I think the Forex market on it, if every day, it's something like three or four trillion dollars are exchanged um, are trading on the Forex markets. So, you know, it, way, way larger than any of us. In terms of that, you get your major pairs, pound, dollar, euro, dollar, you know, dollar, yen, those type of markets are the most liquid. They've got the most trading volume. And of course, you know, they're the ones that most traders will probably focus on if they're trading Forex. And on most brokers, you'll see a representation of this because you'll have tighter spreads on those major Forex pairs, probably tighter spreads than any other market. And also in terms of things like risk of slippage, they're usually diminished on the major Forex pairs because they're the most liquid markets. So we can see the direct result of liquidity when we're placing trades on something like the pound USD compared to an exotic currency pair. If you traded one of the exotics or one of the really minor currency pairs, you'll see the spreads are wider and quite often the risk of slippage is a lot higher. So there's a direct impact of the liquidity of the market. Outside of the Forex pairs, you know, you've got your things like your large cap stocks are certainly the most liquid markets there and even major commodities. So oil and gold will be the two that will be considered by most the highest liquidity on any commodities. So, okay, they're not up to the level of Forex pairs, absolutely, in terms of, you know, sheer amount of trading volume, but the liquidity is definitely still there. And that's why they're popular markets for a lot of traders that don't trade Forex, for example. So now we've covered kind of some examples of liquidity in markets. Let's have a look at kind of how it would affect our trading. Let's focus in on the spreads. Let's focus in on the competitiveness and kind of why picking liquid markets is beneficial to you. So let's now have a look at an example where a more liquid market is a lot better for us to trade on. And a few factors we can look at as well to identify liquidity. So I've got here USD JPY, I'm just gonna put on a daily chart um, and compare that to um, GBP SGD. So we're looking at pound against Singapore dollar, 
compared to dollar against Japanese yen. So, you know, if you've been trading Forex, chances are, you know, you'd have come across USD JPY before, but pound Singapore dollar may not be too familiar with you. So let's have a look first at trading volume. Now, this is always difficult to gauge because in the Forex pairs being decentralized, you know, we're relying on broker information about their volume of trading, but it's always a good place to start and just compare what we say the size of the market. So if you're looking down here, you know, daily tick volume is somewhere around the kind of 200, peaking up to about 300 on a couple of days we've seen. If we're talking about um, pound Singapore dollar, you're really only breaching 100,000 a couple of times. And this isn't what we would consider to be a really exotic market at all. This is still a minor pair. So it's, it, you know, just below the majors. If we went down even further, you'd see that volume decrease a lot. But there is still enough of a difference between what we call one of the really big forex pairs here to a minor pair and we see that represented kind of most obviously in the spread now i'm doing this when the markets are closed and um, so the spread's not exactly fair but it's a good representation obviously it will move through the day and if you're concerned about how we use spreads and how they change we did a previous video on that so go and check that out as well and um, but if you look at the spread here on dollar yen we're talking about a point Whereas if we're talking about the spread on pound Singapore dollar, 34. So already you're at a huge disadvantage taking a trade on pound Singapore against dollar yen. Now you're already so far behind the break even point that it puts you at a real, real challenge to try and get into profit there compared to what we see there where the spreads are very tight. And this is directly related to the liquidity of the market. You know, how many traders are taking positions? Remember what we talked about earlier? how tight the spread is, how easy it is to get into a trade. More traders will be taking positions on pound um, on dollar yen, and therefore there's more buyers, there's more sellers, the broker can offer a more competitive price, and therefore their spreads can be a lot tighter. And obviously they'll do this to entice traders in. You know, that's another part of using the spreads. The broker wants to use the major markets to bring traders on board, and with tighter spreads, Certainly that's one way to kind of get trader interest, obviously. We want as tight a spread as possible. So you can see there a direct relationship between the more liquid the market and how easy it is and how kind of advantageous it is for us to take trades as traders on those markets that are most liquid with tighter spreads. And if we look at a market, for example, you know, non-forex, if we look at um, S&P 500, you're talking there, I'll just delete those lines that we've got a spread of 1.5 there. Again, market's shut, but if we compare that to, um, let's say the Netherlands 25, um, a much smaller market, obviously 753 price instead of 4,000, but the spreads are very close. So again, one thing to always bear in mind when you're looking at spreads is against the size of the market. So you know, a much smaller market like this might look like it has a more competitive spread, but the spread is a percentage of the market price it's a lot more significant here. So that's always worth bearing in mind. So there we have some examples of basically where high liquidity is really beneficial for traders and why we should try and focus on high liquidity markets. One of the other things we didn't cover in that example because it's difficult to show um, just on kind of the trading data we have there is how slippage is impacted by liquidity. So we talked about slippage a little earlier on, I mentioned it, and we see that in low liquidity markets. Basically slippage is where the price you want to get into the market at can't be fulfilled. So you will get in, basically the market will slip, the price will slip. We'll talk about that a little bit more in one of our later videos we're gonna do on market volatility, because it kind of ties in heavily to volatility as well. But certainly on low liquidity markets, you are far more likely to incur slippage and therefore get in at a worse position. So with all being said, guys, hopefully that's helped to kind of un basically help you understand what liquidity is. And most importantly, why we want to trade those highly liquid markets. Although you'll hear some traders mention, you know, this particular currency bear on this particular share or whatever, it looks really good at the moment. If it's low liquidity, you're always going to be setting yourself up at a bit more of a disadvantage than you would be if you were trading a highly liquid market. With that being said, guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully that was useful. If you'd like to find out a little bit more about trading and how we trade, for example, um, book a call in with one of our team to go through any questions you have and um, the links in the description uh, and otherwise hopefully see you on the next video we'll continue the series talk about a few more trading topics and hopefully just help you understand trading a bit more thanks for watching guys as always